destiny of the Aaron and there are no days. We are un unfortunately somewhat behind Yud Zion Amid Bays. In the uh, Tzuris Hadaf, it's 10 lines down, Tana Rabbanan, immediately opposite Marba Ani Es Habein in Taismas. If you're using the English translation by Art Scroll, it's 17B1, the top of the inner column. Okay? So, Tana, we're still discussing what the obligation of the slave, of the Eved Ivri, is to the family that he serves when the uh, master of the household is Nifter. Tana Rabbana, Eved Ivri, Eved Es The Bryce says that he does serve the son of the master, who's now the new master, for the to, to complete his six-year term. Okay? The ain't no evidence of boss. But if there's no son and a girl is the heir, he does not have to serve a woman because the only woman a man has to serve is his spouse. There were, somebody... Somebody made a great comment the other day. I want to give credit. Uh, when I mentioned Ruvain's Kasha, about why do we put Avadim in with the marriage? So somebody came over to me later and says, because every Jewish man is an Eved Ivri vis-a-vis his wife. <laughs> so, okay. But so you only, okay. So I'm a Ivri. Uh, let me interrupt. It's better to be an Evan before Nisha. Okay, I'm about. telling Eileen you said that. Go on. Okay. That is referring to the number of mitzvahs you have to do, not to your status. I'm a Evriya Eno Ovedes Lo Es Abain Vilo Es Abbas. Mashen came the little girl who is an indentured servant. She gets to go out, even if she's only nine or ten, on the demise of the master. And neither, no heir, not a boy, not a girl, can inherit her. Hanirza, the pierced ear guy, or a Jewish indentured servant who is working for a non-Jewish master. Ain no oive lois a ben below as a bus, neither the male nor the female heirs can control them. They get to go free on the death of the master. Going back to the beginning of the Brysa, Omar Mark, the master teaches. Eved Ivri, Eved Esaben, he does get to serve the male descendant who is the inheritor. But he does not serve the female if she is the heir. How do we know that? So we have a different price that it says, and he quotes a pasuk. You shall work or serve for six years. You shall work for him for six you shall he literally he shall serve you for six years. The male Jewish slave shall serve you, the master, for six years. You and not anyone who inherits after you. Okay, Ata Omer Yoresh. So you tell me it means that it, you, I have to serve the master if I'm a slave, but not his inheritor? Oh, Maybe what it means is this fa the man and not any heir, including the son. So, but that can't be true because of the definitive Kishahu Oimeh Sheish Shonim Ya'avod. 
which seems to be definitive, you serve for six years in any case. So the way we resolve the conflict is by saying um, you continue your term of six years if there's a male heir, but you do not if there's only a female heir. And it's only the son, not a collateral male heir. Uh, okay, so. And another, okay, so now, Hare Leben Amr, you're telling me that it's the son who can inherit the work of this slave too? Ha ma'ani mikayim vavada chashesh shanim. How do I deal with the pus of shesh shanim? You shall serve him for six years. So there are other people who don't have to work for six years, is the implication. That's where we get the loopholes of the girl, or if it's not a male son, that he, and that's where you get the loophole. Okay. Mara Isia, what do we see over here? La Rabbis has a Ben, Blahitsi has a up. What do we see in these psukim that specifically limits this inheritance rule? to male <laughs> descendants and not collateral heirs like a brother. Okay? But why don't we say it's the other way around? We're going to try and so the Bryce and we're going to do show both sides of that. Marva ani esabein I add I include only the son shechen kum tachas of the viadatali I say that it's the son because of the number of privileges he is uniquely given on the death of his father. The first is he can do yiyud, which means marry the little girl slave. The second is he inherits the, the ancestral estate. And and he, okay, so and he can do yid with the little girl, and he inherits the ancestral estate. That's two. So Gemara says, Adarabba, let's look at the other way around. Marba on the Esaach, I would rather say it's the collateral heir, his his surviving brother. Shechen kum taches achiv leyivum. Because he, if there's, if there are no children, as a surviving brother, he steps in and literally takes his brother's place. He gets his wife, he gets his land, he gets his money, he gets the whole shebang. So why don't we say he is a more likely heir for the uh, Eved Ibri? Klum yesh yivum elabamakam shein bein. But the fact of the matter is, Yivum is limited to the unique circumstance of a man with no children. Okay? Ha, yesh bein, if he does have a child, ain't Yivum, then the brother doesn't get his, his widow. El a time de ika ha pircho. But now you're going to tell me the reason it's the son is because you can upschlub the notion of Yibum by saying it's a special case. Hola, but if you, that were not the case, in other words, if every time the man died, his brother gets his wife, maybe then the brother would certainly be primary. So even in that case, the typically, the hacha tarte v'hachachada, even if you would argue that in some theoretical world, people die without having children often enough that it's usual for Yibam to occur. But then if there is a son, he has two special uh, statuses. He gets to marry the servant girl if he likes, and he gets to inherit. Whereas the brother only does yibum and everything that goes along with it, like 
okay? That would be the woman and the land. So that's why it's the boy and not the brother. So the Achuza Nami may hide Pirchahu de Konafkale La Tana. But over here also, the, the case of the ancestral land where the father, the boy gets the land, that that is based on the Pircha as well. Because there is no Yibum unless there is no son. Okay, that's the end of that. Now we're going back to female indentured service. Amra Avriya Eina Ovedes Loes Abain Beloes Abbas, the little girl that's father sold her into servitude when the master dies prior her to her twelfth birthday, neither the bo- the man's male heir nor if there is none his female heir gets to claim her. Minahan Emili, how do I know that? Omar Rapada, Rapada explains the Omar Kra, the next pasuk after the pierced ear wording. If the guy wants to stay, the master shall pierce his ear and he serves him forever. And then the pasuk continues, same thing applies, literally, do the same thing to the little girl. Okay, but that's problematic. First of all, Acacia Cus of Linirza. So the Pasuk ostensibly associates the little girl with the with the male uh, indentured servant. So if you read the Pasuk clear quickly without thinking it through, you'd say the little girl gets her pierced ear too. Then you have to buy her earrings, but that's another issue. Okay, man, it's a eina oved lo es habein lo es habas. So we want to learn since the male ear pierced slave only stays until the death of the master or yovel, whichever comes first. Af ama avria eina ovedes lo es habein lo es habas. That's how we're going to interpret it. The same. Halachic status that applies to certain aspects of the Nirza apply to the little girl. Vahai la amaska tasa kain, but the wording that you do the same thing to the female maidservant. Hachi hadasa, is it really to tell you that? Hekesh? Okay. Homa boy le because we use it. In another, brought by the rationale of another brisa, but afla amoska tasechen lehenik. We already learned this that the little girl, when she leaves, either on the death of the master, or on her twelfth birthday, you know, if she has pubic hair, she gets parting gifts. That's how, just as the. Nirza gets parting gifts when he finally goes. So too, you give the little girl parting gifts when she goes. Okay. Ata Omer. Now the Gemara asks, is that so? Ata Omer Lehenik. We're talking about the go away presents. Oh, Eina Ella Liritzia. Maybe it means she also should talk to get a pierced ear. Okay. So the answer to that is the Pasuk says the prelim to the Pasuk you shall pierce his ear and he serves you forever is if the slave declares I don't want to go. Now that Pasuk uses the word Ebed. Ha Ebed. The slave. Eliminating, limiting it to males. But it doesn't say anything about a female maidservant. Thus, we've learned that through that Ritzia does not apply to girls. 
Ha ma ani mekayem ve'af la'amas v'cha ta'aselo ba mekayem rather how do I establish the uh, utilize the pasuk and you do the same to her lahenik but right he, he winds up if it's if it's in the pasuk of a guy who stays forever and she can't stay forever unless of course he marries her then you have to say the commonality is the go away gifts okay now in Cain, if the pusik only means that the girl is compared to a nirza with regard to the go away gift do the same to a girl why does it have the extra word my ta'ase, why is the extra word ta'ase in there? Shmaitim in a tarte, we learn two rules. We learn the rule that she does not get to, uh, to be inherited by the children of the master. We, and we learn the rule that she gets go away gifts because of the extra word. Okay, now we're going back to the Brisa. Both the stay slave, the slave who refuses to leave and has his ear pierced, and the Jewish indentured servant owned by a non Jew. He, in both cases, they get to go free on the death of the master. There's no issue of serving out the rest of the contract with other with the other family members, i.e. this son. Okay, now we're going to try and explain that. Uh, the male doesn't get to stay if his master dies. The right of as Osno because the Master pierces his ear, the Marseya with an ear piercing tool, the of the Leila, and he serves forever. Now, just note the Leila doesn't have the Vav because it literally is not forever, it's only until the Oyo. Okay, the Loes Habain, the Loes Abbas, and he doesn't get to work for the Son, or if there is no son, the daughter, if the master dies. And so, okay, we got that. We got that pasuk. But how about the Jew who is sold to a non-Jew? How do we know about him that he doesn't work until when I determine a contract if the master dies? Omer Chizkia, Omer Kra, Chizkia looks for a Pusik and he finds it. And the Pusik says, Vehishav es Kainehu. That means that he de- he worry, he he copes with, or he reckons, they use the Lushan, reckons with his the one who acquired him, his purchaser. So the purchaser, that was the man who bought him, that was not the Son of the man who bought him. The law im yarshe konehu, and not with the heirs of the one who purchased him. So that's got a, the problem with that is okay. So Omar Rava, Rava says, you're making some assumptions here that we have to discuss. You're making a very fundamental assumption that. The laws of inheritance apply to Goyim as well as they do to Jews. Because you're saying a Jewish servant is not inherited by the Goy's heir. That means other things are. So let's deal with that notion first. Okay. Omarava. Divar Taira. Ayvid Kachavim Yoresh Ha'avim. According to the Torah, meaning the Raisa, a non-Jew who has a child, that child inherits from his father, Shenemar, because of this Pasuk, the he shave him Kainehu. He should 
deal with the je- with the master, but not with the master's son. Therefore, the implication is the master's son inherits everything else. Okay? Miklal de Isle Yoshim. So we see from this that Goyim can write wills and bequeath to their children. Now, he's going to go on. And he's going to get into some complications. If a person converts to Judaism, his blood relatives are no longer his halachic relatives. Everybody understand that? Okay. Pete and Harry are brothers. Pete can, and they have a father, Sam. And Pete has a child, uh, John. Pete converts to Judaism. Harry is still his father biologically. And the other guy, I forgot his name, is still his brother. And John is still his son biologically. But halachically, they're not relatives anymore. Because the going into the mikveh and coming out makes you a new human. Okay? So you're sort of born from the mikveh, not from your family. So obviously, that's going to impact inheritances. So now we're going to go weiter. Ger es avid kachavim, a convert who becomes Jewish, a nu medabre toira ela medibre seifrim. The notion that there is still, because of the blood relationship, there still may be a will leaving money to him or his by his brother or his father that's not from the Torah because of what I explained that's but the rabbis allow it so if you are a Jewish convert and somebody in your family leaves you a million bucks you're allowed to take the money but that's a rabbinic takana that's not a Torah rule, according to this statement of Rav. Okay, Ditanan, because we have a Brisa that explains, and a Mishnah actually that explains, Ger ve'ovet kachavim, sheyorshu es avihem oivet kachavim. Now it's getting very complicated. A man has two sons. One A non-Jewish man has two sons. One of them converts to Judaism. The man dies leaving his estate equally to his two sons. But his will does not list every conceivable item. It simply says, my sons should divide my estate equally. Now, there's a lot of halakha problems here. Because the guy may have things that are Asr Bahano. He's got a statue of uh, Buddha, right? He's got uh, 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 10 cases of the world's most expensive wine, Yayan Nesek. They're Asr Bahano. So, how can they divvy it up? If the new Jew, takes 50% of the stated assets, he is indirectly benefiting from the stuff he's not allowed to benefit from. And if he gives them up, and he says, okay, exclude those and then divvy, then he's violating the terms of the will. So he's in a big problem. So the halacha says that because of this Dinder Rabbanan where we're making because it's rabbinic, what we say here is, the new Jew can say to his brother, the Goy, you take the statue of Buddha, not literally, the devoted Zora thing that I'm assert to own or deal with or have any benefit from, and I'll take an equivalent amount from the cash. 
Okay. Tula to Yayan Nese, Vaani Peros. You take the trace stuff that I can't have anything to deal with, the Yayan Nesek, the non the wine used for Vodazara. And I'll take the fruits and vegetables, which are kosher, even if a goy owns them. Okay? So that's the, the divi. What? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. One brother is a goy. So there's no problem with him teaching, keeping the Salem. And there's no problem with him keeping the Ayan Nesach. He's a boy. But the Jew can say, I'll, which means he's indirectly benefiting from the Ayan Nesach. If there's $10,000 worth of wine in the wine cellar, and he says to his brother, you take the wine, and I'll take 10 grand from the drawer with Tati Hodge's money, then he's indirectly benefiting. If it were a strict rule of no benefit, then the, the goy would take the wine and they'd do 5,000 each on the pile of money. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Indirect benefit is us, sir. Well, what I'm saying is that the goy says, no, I don't want no wealth. I want the money. I, I don't understand your question. The, the issue. I mean, it, it, then, that, then the lawyers will say to him, you have to, because daddy's will says split it 50-50. Under Goyish law, there's no problem whatsoever. You get this, I get that. You get this, I get that, until it's all gone. Goy, the Goy can't complain. It's only under Jewish law that there's a problem. Because the new Jew can't benefit from a Vita Zara. What's his problem? His pro I don't understand your issue. The Goy is not being disrupted in any way, shape, or form. The Goy is getting ten thousand dollars worth of stuff, and the uh, and the Jew is getting ten thousand dollars worth of stuff. The two brothers agree to it. The two, and, and the, the, you know, it's just divvied up. It's not an issue. It's not an issue. If it became an issue, the lawyers would deal with it. But the halacha is assuming it's not an issue. We don't care what happens in the Goyish court. We're only dealing with the halacha. And the halacha is the new Jew can't take part of the wine. So he compensates by taking something else, like money. Okay, that's the only thing we're, we're interested in. So now, what would happen? What? That's the only thing with Jews. We're only interested in Jews. This is the Talmud. This is not the Babylonian uh, book of rules. We're only interested in Jewish law. And this is how Jewish law handles the issue of a Jew, Jew maybe having an interest in something he's not allowed to have an interest in because he converted and then his father left it to him. That's all we're interested in. Put blinders on. Okay? So now, that's that case. Okay? However, if the gear jumped the gun and emptied the wine cellar, then that's the halacha would say that's out of the estate, and the Jewish brother would not be able to have a claim on more stuff because you already took some. Okay, that's how the halacha defines it. The isal kedaitach diraisa. If you were going to try and 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 argue that this inheritance concept is diraisa for non-Jews, kilo ba'olirishu sonami, then we'd have to say on a Torah level. 
that the Jew has to forego all the non uh, uh, stuff that's for all the stuff that's forbidden to him. And that would be skimmed off the top by the non-Jew and they divvy up the rest. Okay? Because if you did, if it was on a derisa level, whatever the Jew is taking is compensation for what the Goy took and therefore he's indirectly benefiting. Okay, Ella So the rule is only midrabanan with Goyish inheritance. The Gezera who the Avud Rabanan Shema Yachser Lesuro. And the reason that the rabbis were so generous with this issue was because if it's a huge estate, the non Jew may say to himself, look, if it went by Torah law and the non-Jew has to say where his father was a wine merchant and he has a vast warehouse of wine and the Jew can't take at least the cash, the Jew would say, I don't want to be screwed out of my inheritance. I'll, I won't follow the halacha. I'll become a goy again. In other, in other words, there's a certain amount of money that the rabbis are assuming could dissuade you from following the halacha. 20 bucks, I don't care, but 20 million? You know, I might eat bacon for 20 million. So that's the idea here. Okay, so they made this gezera that we cut the convert some slack so that he can get his half of Tati's estate. Tanya Nami Yachi, the same thing is mentioned in a, in a brisa, which is much earlier than Rava. Rava is an Amira. The Medvar and Memurim, what are we talking about? Where we waive the us Isr Bahana restrictions. Kishi Yarsho. We, when we're talking about the, the new Jew inheriting. Avo Kinish Tatfu Asur. But if a Jew goes into partnership with a non-Jew. And they're very successful. Like uh, I had a friend who was partners with a person buying Persian uh, rubies. I'm sorry. Uh, Bur uh, Bur Bur Burma, whatever that's called. They're the best rubies. Now, they are Asr Bahana for him if, the, if his partner say makes an or gives an order from a church to use these uh, maybe not but uh, you got the idea if a buddhist wants to buy a dozen rubies to put in a statue so then they become a servahana for the jew and you would not be able to equitably split they would have to come off the top because he didn't fall into the situation he walked into the situation so the Gezeira doesn't apply. And if you dissolve the partnership, whatever the Goy gets is off the top. Okay. Now we're going back and to Rava and his discussion. That was a Brisa supporting Rava. Of it, Kachavim es when a non-Jew, what about a non-Jew leaving to the Jewish convert, the Ger es hager? And what about a convert whose father also converted? We're going a step further. If the father and the son both convert, they're now both Jewish, but they're not halachic relatives. They're both new people. Nevertheless, the father likes his kid and he wants to leave him. Will the halacha allow the son to take. Now we don't have the previous issue. It's a whole new issue. Neither the Torah law nor the rabbinic amplifications of the Torah law come say that they're relatives. 
they don't come on to this issue. It's a non, we have a Bryce, uh, actually it's the Sanya. We have a Bryce, love of Ma'as Min Hager, Shinishkairu Bonav Imo. If a man and his son both convert to Judaism and the man had previously lent money to a Jew. So the Jew owes O'Reilly the money who's now changed his name to Abramowitz. When, if they were all Jewish all the time, then if the lender dies, the lender's heir steps in and collects his father's debts. But in this case, since the son is not really halachically the son of the lender, he's no more related to him than I am. He can't collect the father's debts. The father's debts have no collectors unless, of course, he had a Jewish son after that. So now, what do we do here? Love us, min hager. You borrow money from a non-Jew, shenis gairo, and then he converts. Bun of Imo and his son converts at the same time. Lo lachsa lavano. The borrower no longer has an obligation to pay to that son. The lo the im yachsar. Unless you think that with name sure as a din, he should do it. This crisis says, Ein ruach The rabbis do not think that's a nice thing to do. You're giving away Jewish money. You can't do that. You can only pay what you really owe. I mean, you could give charity if it's a poor person, but you can't say, well, I'll, it's only a few bucks. I'll be a good guy. I'll pay my debt. You can't do that. I... There's another price so that's exact opposite. Vahatanya ruachamim noichemenu. The rabbis do think it's a nice idea for you to pay, even though technically you don't have to. Lokasha, not a problem. Khan Shahu Rashulidi Daso Shalobikadusha. And turn the page. Vachan shehu raso shelo bikedusha vele daso bikedusha. Talking about two distinct circumstances. In the first case, where the rabbis say it's not a nice idea to pay it back, is if both the the the, the father and the son both convert. And therefore, there's absolutely no connection between them. In the second case, a man takes lessons to convert and his wife takes the same lessons and they schedule the mikvah for August. And in July, she finds out she's pregnant. So she does immerse. And because of Uchladafras who the baby is considered as if it too immersed. And when the baby emerges, the parents are his parents. Now, for, for a, a mere opinion, what we do is when that boy is 12, is 13 years old, we do a toughest on bris. We pierce his penis with a needle, draw one drop of blood, just in case he really isn't Jewish. But he is Jewish for all intents and purposes from birth. He has a bris at eight days, etc. You got to be louder. I can. The boy marries a Jewish woman who already has a Jewish child. That's true, but that's not what we're talking about. I mean, you got to stick to the daf. We're talking about two non Jews who have a intimate relationship by non-Jewish standards. We, we don't call them married. We call them uh, living together because we don't recognize the sanctity 
of non-Jewish unions. Nonetheless, the man impregnates a non-Jewish woman. They both convert while she's pregnant. That's the case we're talking about. No other case. Okay? You, you were right with that? Yeah. Okay. Now, Rav Chia Bar Avin Amar Rav Yochanan, Rav Chia Bar Avin, quoting Rav Yochanan, who is one of the early Amarayim, Ave Kachavim Yoresh Es Aviv Dvar Torah. He says, I don't like anything that this we just previously learned. I don't like the idea that a goy cannot inherit from his uh, father or grandfather, and it's only a rabbinic law, it's not a Torah law. That's ridiculous, he says. Or as, or as uh, Rav Shimon would say, get out of here. Okay? Um, he says, Ki Yerushala Ace of Nasati as our Ace we say it every morning. Esav got an inheritance of Harseir. So here you see a non-Jew who inherited from his father. And it's a pasuk in the Torah. So the Gemara says, you're making a mistake. Who says Esav is a non-Jew? Esav had a Jewish mother. Esav had a Jewish father. Esav is as Jewish as you or I. The only thing is, he didn't follow the Jewish rules. Well, half of the, more than half the Jews I know don't follow the Jewish rules. They're still Jewish. The Dilma Yisrael Mumar Shiny. Maybe a non-religious Jew is different, and the Torah does cover him. But an actual Gentile is not in the Torah. And therefore, Rabbi Yechelen, maybe you're wrong. So Rabbi Chia said, but knows Chumash pretty well. He says, you don't like that Pasuk? I got another Pasuk. Elamei Hacha, let's learn it from a different Pasuk. Ki Levnei Lot, to the children, the descendants of Lot, Nosati es Air Yerusha. I give the place called Air to the descendants of Lot as a Yerusha. Now, Lot did not have a Jewish mother and father. So Lot is Taka, a real goy. my time So now, why did Rav Chia Baravin have to dig up this Rav Yoichan and a couple of psukim to, to argue with Rabba? Why does he just go along with Rabba? That it's uh, okay, and Rava is the came up with the reckon from the purchaser rule that it is at least an asmachta in the Torah. Mikosiv does it say veheshiv im konehu lo im yurshe konehu. The pasuk doesn't spell it out. You have to deal with the guy who bought you. You don't have to deal with the heir of the guy who bought you. That was only an inference. So if it's only an inference, you can debate it. So it's not rock solid. Okay. Varava, my time Allah Amr Karev Baravin. A better question is why does Rava insist it's only Midrabanan? Why doesn't he buy into the Lot Pasuk, if nothing else. Mishom the Kvaido of Ram Shaini. Maybe, because at the time of Avraham, there was only one Jew in the whole world. So the rules of the, uh, the unique circumstance of Avraham having non Jewish relatives is. You, is a shah is only for that moment in time. After that, Jews multiplied and we could have all sorts of Jewish rules. So maybe Lot is an exception and you can't generalize to other non Jews. Okay, literally it means because of the honor of Abraham, the rule is different. Next case, Tanarabana. Yesh 
We learned this sort of before. There are uh, manumission standards, rules, that apply to male indentured servants, but not to females. And there are emancipation standards, like share, that apply to the female, but not to the male. Yes, but uh, what are some of them for men? Now, we're, this is going to differ from things we've learned earlier. So hold, you know, don't pop up a hand, please. Shehu Yehitzay B'Shanim, he gets out when his term is up. Ubi Yovel, and by Yovel, if it comes before his term is up. Ubi Mises Adon, or the death of the master. Okay? Masha Ein Kain Ba'avriya, which is not the case of Rhea. Now, we know the six-year rule doesn't apply to her, but what about the death of the master? We'll get to it. And the extra thing for the girl is if she gets pubic hair, she's out of it. The Ainanim Keres Venises. Now we're getting some new interesting rules. Okay? She cannot be sold multiple times by her father. We had earlier the notion that the rich uncle redeems her because of covet of the family. So the father, if the girl, for whatever reason, is out of there, she gets redeemed, she gets divorced while she's still a minor, by someone who did marry her, whatever the rationale. Her, her father, although he, she returns to his control, he cannot sell her to someone else. Okay, that's the first statement. Okay. She may be redeemed even against his will. Now that's an interesting thing because it doesn't have, it's not Balkor her will, it's his will. And we're going to have to figure out who the he is. Right? Masha in King the Ivri, which is not the case by an Ivri, a male Jewish servant. If the rich uncle wants to redeem him, he says, sorry, Unc, I don't want to go. I'll get my ear pierced if I have to. Leave me alone. Okay? Omar Mar. Now, going back to the Bryce and looking at it, yesh ivri she'en v'avriya. There are rules that apply to the male, but not to the female. Okay? Uraminhu. But there's a contradiction between this and our Mishnah that is the basis of the whole discussion. Our Mishnah said, Yisera Alav Ama Ivriya, there's an extra out for a Jewish girl slave that she goes when she gets Simonin. Simonin. She gets to go free and own herself when she has pubic hair. Okay, so that's a contradiction. So Omer of Sheshes, he explains that the that the Bryce is not talking about Stam, a Jewish indentured servant girl. The Bryce is talking about a Jewish indentured servant girl that got married to either the master or his son. Okay? Kigon Sha'oda, he married her from something called Yiyud. Okay, now, Yiyud literally means demonstration of intention. So the master did something undefined to demonstrate that he was marrying the little girl or he gave it to her, his son and he made some demonstration of marriage. So now... At the, she obviously doesn't go at the end of six years. She also doesn't go with this pubic hair. The only way she can go is if her husband gives her a divorce 
or actually, if she's still a minor, it gives her, her father the document of a divorce, or he dies. So that's off the table, and that's why the bride didn't have. Okay, so you are the pita. Hey, marriage, of course, marriage is different. She's not a slave girl anymore. Gita boy, she needs a get. Maudatema, what are you going to try and tell me? Lo yavatla hilchasa mine. Okay, she got married, but she's still a slave girl. And when she has pubic hair, the slave girl status comes off. She's only now a wife. I mean, it's a, it's a bizarre notion, but it's suggested as a havamina. Kamash Malon, the fact that Bryson doesn't have anything about it is proof that marriage, she's totally no longer a slave girl. Now she's a wife, which may be better or maybe worse, depending on the husband. Okay? So, Ihochi, if that's the case, am I Yatsavisimonin? Why does the Brysa, if the Brysa is talking about she's now married, why does the Brysa mention the Simonim out? Okay? Hochi come. We're re-reading the Brysa in a different way. Im lo yoda yotza afisimani. Unless someone in the family marries her, she goes out with simanim. That's how we're interpreting the Brysa. Okay. McClough. So now we have an implication. The Evid Ivri Nimchor Venisa. That since it says a female slave cannot be sold many times, maybe a male slave can. But we have a different price. Big, 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 We have a price. And now we're going back to the thief who stole. Okay, to make things very simple, we'll start with a a hundred dollars buys a year. And the normal sentence is six years. So up to six years. So uh, it's worth 600 bucks. Okay. If the guy gets caught with the stuff, he has to pay an extra 600 bucks. So now it's 1200 bucks. How does that impact things? Big Nevoso, only his thievery itself. Below the cafe loan, but not the fine, the double the payment fine that goes along. Big Nevoso for the thievery. Below the Hazamamo. If a person lies and said, I saw Harry steal. And somebody else comes along and said, you couldn't have seen Harry steal. You were with me in Pittsburgh. So he's called an aid, an aid zone And he has to pay whatever penalty the guy he tried, the, he tried to inflict on the innocent victim. So if it's a death penalty, he gets killed. There are restrictions. If it's monetary, he has to pay. So if you're an aid zone and you owe money, you cannot be sold by the court. Okay? The Genevaso, by his own act of thievery, Kevan Shinimcher Pamacha Shuv Ein Atarashai Lamaikrai. If he has been sold once, he cannot be sold again. If he sold, in my initial example, $1,200 worth of jewelry, he can only, <clears throat> we don't sell him for six years. It gets out, we sell him the other six years to cover the other half. He can only be sold once. So, this is telling us clearly that a Jewish servant can only be sold once. Now, it's true. We had earlier, what if his relatives bail him and he resells himself? But this is sold by court, 
not sold by himself. So this contradicts, okay? Omer Rava, Lokash, it's not a problem. Khan the Geneva Achas. Sometimes a guy goes and loots a house, spends eight hours looting the house, collects a whole bunch of stuff. That's one act of thievery. Sometimes he goes from door to door and takes from this house and takes from that house. That potentially could be called multiple acts of thievery. Okay? Can bestay genevos, the brysa, which it says he can be sold twice, is where there are two totally distinct crimes. He went from one building to another, or he did one robbery on Monday and one robbery two weeks later. So he can be tried and convicted of each separate crime. And that could resolve the conflict between the two prices. All right, we'll go just a little bit more. Omer Leabaya, the Genevoso Tuva Mashma. The word Genevoso, the best English translation it's, is. Thievery. So if I steal today and I steal tomorrow, it's because I'm still a thief. It's all in my helemachas of thievery. It's all in my period of time that I'm a thief. Okay, so therefore, he could only be tried for, he could even be tried for multiple offenses that occur serially one right after the other in one courtroom and get multiple, but, but he only gets to pay with one six-year sentence. Ella Omer Abaya Lakasha, we still don't have a conflict between the Bryces. Khan Adam Echad, there he only stole from a lot from one individual, Khan Bene Adam. In the second case, he made smaller thefts from multiple individuals, and we'll stop there. Okay, tomorrow we'll go as far as we can. And then Shabbos, we will not have a shear. We have to do it on our own. And on Sunday, I'll pick up as if we hadn't fallen behind. In other words, I'll pick up at the beginning of the next stop. Is that clear? Otherwise, we make so, it up ourselves. What? We make it up ourselves. You make up the loss by ourselves, correct. Okay. Have a lovely day. I believe it stopped raining. We have that tomorrow. What? Yeah, tomorrow we'll go as far as we can. If I don't get questions, maybe I can cover some ground. And then Shabbos, we do up to where we're supposed to be Sunday morning. And that's where I'll pick up. Otherwise, we'll never, ever, ever stay on pace. Bobby, don't forget your phone. One morning you did. Yes, I did. I would have stolen it, but I don't like iPhones. Uh-huh.